before I start the lecture itself, uh, in this prologue, for all of the other uh, 18 lectures, 1 through 17 and uh, 19, uh, I had done them before at various levels. And really what I did is I tuned them and honed them and made view graphs uh, better instruments of education. And uh, I learned little bits and pieces. This lecture on synthetic aperture radar was very, very different for me. Uh, in my career, uh, I may mention it in the course of the lecture, but in, uh, because I'm putting this video up after I finished actually all the lectures. And I wanted to just put this as a prologue up uh, to, to, to uh, excuse me, to put this as an epilogue to my uh, experience of putting together this synthetic aperture radar lecture. During my entire career, I had never really studied synthetic aperture radar. I've studied and worked and, and done research in many, many, many different types of radars. Surveillance radars, tracking radars, altimeter radars, just that's imaging radars, uh, the, uh, the whole nine yards almost, but never happened to get near work in synthetic aperture radar. I never had a group leader or a division editor cause come in and say, Bob, we want you, you to work on this synthetic aperture radar project. Uh, so I never had a need to. But over the, the last 20 years of my career, uh, there's been such a, such a growth in the incredible work that's been done in this field uh, that I wanted to add a lecture because I felt for new students coming into the field of radar, synthetic aperture is such a significant, radar techniques are such an important thing that it ought to be there for them. So I really kind of started from, uh, well, I was really in the radar basics. I know them very well. But the techniques that are unique to synthetic aperture radar, many of which are, are, are just as naive as you could get, uh, you know, as, as an incoming student. And so um, I would say it would be, it's been about a year and a half ago in retirement, I started reading to the chapters and textbooks, and I started reading the literature and going over and, uh, you know, technical journals and just learning and understanding. And the more I learned and the more I understood, I was amazed at what synthetic aperture radar has been as a technique. Uh, I, I was, having worked most of my life in national security radars, I was oblivious to its use in the academic work, research and remote sensing. Not completely oblivious, but it was just sort of in the side lobe, so to speak. And, um, and for, because this radar lecture will be used by people at universities, will be working on synthetic aperture radars doing remote sensing, I wanted to have them understand the process and put some focus in on that too, which you can see I've added with examples at the end. I knew people who have worked on it very intimately, and uh, but there are a lot of people out there who I don't, have never met and whose texts are, are papers I've, I've never read and or haven't gone to conferences that have been just on remote sensing or if there was a radar conference in parallel sessions, I tend to not go to the synthetic aperture radar sessions. But I particularly want to note uh, institutions and some people. And, and well, I know the people through the institutions. Uh, Aram and the Willow Run Labs at the, at the University of Michigan were really the starting place where it was a research organization where this really flourished. And uh, good friends who I know through uh, IEEE things, um, uh, Jack Walker, uh, I met Bill Brown when he was the head of Aram, and uh, Dale Osherman. Uh, they've done fantastic work. And ja in fact, Jack shared the Pioneer Award for uh, the work that uh, uh, he did in, the, in, in, some, in a lot of the basic uh, synthetic aperture work that's evolved to what we do now. And, uh, and I never knew, I always knew that my good friend from MIT, uh, Roger Sullivan, uh, had worked at, since, oh, for 20 years ago, I knew Roger had worked at, at Aram and then gone, uh, to work 
at other places at Ida, but at Synthetic Aperture at Radar was where he did his really significant contributions and, and, and a couple of very, their very major SAR projects. And, and so I followed Roger, and certainly uh, when his book came out, you know, I used that as the resource. Uh, and, I, I, and I never have met but learned of Fook Lee, and as I develop, uh, who was a, uh, a key developer of synthetic aperture radar at the worker level, and now I noticed on the, uh, he has a very key senior management role in the uh, Mars project where they, they sent a mission to Mars recently. So he's risen up the ranks in uh, JPL. And I'd like to give a little, uh, the Fred Nathanson Award for the Young Engineer of the Year Award. Well, 20 years ago, we spotted Fook Lee, or at least Mel Skolnick did, and he made a very strong argument and put in a nomination for Fuqui to get that Young Engineer Award. Then Fuqui had to be under 40 years old to get it. And now he's obviously a much older person, as I remember when he, at the uh, banquet, when he got the award for Young Engineer uh, in Fred Nathanson's memorial honor. Uh, so there are, there are people all in many different places, particularly JPL. And where I don't know anybody from Sandia, but when I go to the literature, it, it just came up over and over. So at Sandia, great radar work. And, and, all, and also in the last 20 years at Lincoln Laboratory, there's been uh, a significant amount of great radar work done at the lab, which I have not been involved with, that I knew about in the, in the work that they did, but not the work that the whole community has done as a whole. So that I just wanted to say that, uh, boy, have I learned to, to, to those researchers that uh, may have be, do, be involved in those institutions and other institutions which I haven't named um, that, do, that do that research. It, it has been uh, a great journey for me to learn the material and enjoy learning the material to a point where hopefully um, that I'll be able to uh, teach uh, young radar engineers about synthetic aperture radar, and, uh, and it's been a lot, of, a lot of fun learning that material. Uh, as I probably mentioned in the lecture, um, it took me, I think, about six months of spare time in retirement to learn the material. I spent about six months putting the view graphs together, uh, many of which I think I mentioned in the lecture. Uh, uh, were from uh, work that Jerry Bennett did, who and, and does, who is really a star at the laboratory right now, and uh, uh, not our star, their star. I'm retired now, and uh, at Lincoln Laboratory, and uh, I want to particularly thank the laboratory because they co contributed uh, through Jerry Bennett's lectures that he had put on, and uh, a great understanding to me of the field, personally. Uh, I've read a lot of books on the process of uh, of the uh, polar formatting and this. And I could go through the formalism, but the essence of what it really means physically uh, in the lectures that, that Jerry Bennett's put together, he, had, he did a beautiful job of explaining in physical terms what the complex mathematics meant. And I used a lot of his Phrasy all paraphrasing, uh, particularly in the image formation, and I uh, got permission from Lincoln to use the, uh, many of the view graphs, as you'll see noted at the corners, so that we abide by copyright laws. But I just wanted to put this in as a prologue. And it's been a really pleasant experience for me, and it turns out that this, uh, I did finish lecture 19 before I finished lecture 18. <laughs> Uh, this epilogue and uh, the prologue to the synthetic aperture radar is really a, a prologue to this lecture, but in uh, epilogue to the whole process that I've gone through, I, I really hope uh, this complete course now with 19 lectures and pretty close to 30 hours of lecture material will be useful to the community out there. And uh, one thing I might add that um, I'm hoping uh, to get ready to be able to teach this course uh, and get it so that people can take it for credit at the University of New Hampshire uh, via the web. 
w the website for the course here will contain information when that becomes available. So take care and good luck with your careers. Mine's about over now. <laughs>